Good afternoon, Marist College community. I'm Nick Gabriel, and we're back with a special episode of the Red Fox Report. Here today, we have a fresh face on the Marist campus, and his name is Dr. Kevin Weinman. Though starting October 4th, President Weinman is the more appropriate term. Following in the footsteps of President Dennis Murray, Dr. Weinman will act as the fifth president in the history of Marist College, and I'm honored to have him on the show today. So, President Wyman, first off, welcome to the Red Fox Report, and thank you so much for being here. I hope your stay in Poughkeepsie has been well, especially with our famous Hudson River sunsets. Have you been settling in well? Yeah, thanks, Nick. I appreciate, appreciate the chance to talk to you today. Yeah, it's been, um, I'm at the beginning of week four now, so I'm a grizzled veteran. <laughs> um, uh, it's, been, it's been a really great three plus weeks. The community has been incredibly welcoming. There's been so much going on. I've been able to take in a lot. Of course, we had a reunion and homecoming just this past weekend. Uh, I've been to a number of uh, fall sports and, and matches. Uh, Heidi Chronicles uh, started my office hours with students. I've got some meetings with uh, faculty and staff over lunch. So I'm um, really just trying to meet as many people as I can and, and take in all this community has to offer. I, I go to sleep very tired every night because there's so much going on, uh, but it's been a, a really great um, uh, and energizing way to, to begin my time here. Awesome. So it looks like your Marist resume is increasing. So before we begin, I'll, I'll congratulate you on your extensive professional resume, your career spanning both the corporate and higher education fields from holding roles as a senior financial analyst at Western Union to acting as the senior vice president of financial planning and budgeting at Dartmouth and finishing with chief financial officer at Amherst. Your resume is extensive. So, and Maris is very glad to have you. How did you manage to pull all this off while pursuing an MBA, a master of arts and a doctor of philosophy during this time? Uh, well, when, when you put it that way, it sounds daunting uh, and also raising a family too. So. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I, probably probably two things. One is I don't sit still well. I always like to be working towards something, uh, you know, whether it be some of the academic work that you mentioned there or some other things I enjoy doing um, outside of work. Um, but also, I just love learning and have always been, you know, from the moment that I uh, graduated college, have always found myself back in a college classroom or a college environment, either as a student, a teacher, or an administrator, virtually every year since. Um, so the, um, uh, you know, it's just been something I've enjoyed doing and I, I get a lot of energy from it and now I'm happy to be fully immersed uh, here, here at Marist as, uh, as the next president. So what made you first decide to become a part of higher education? Sure, yeah, good question. So, um, so I spent roughly half of my career, 14 years, in, uh, in the private sector in various corporate roles. And then you're right, in 2007, uh, I started uh, my time in higher ed working for Dartmouth as, uh, as its uh, budget director and, and, and have, have moved on from, from, from there. So um, I found myself, even you know, as I was working in, in the corporate world and, and enjoying it, uh, I found myself spending more and more time on college campuses doing master's degree in history and then teaching on an adjunct basis uh, courses at the University of Colorado and Colorado Springs. So uh, by day I would do my work as a, as a finance and marketing professional and by night I would either uh, be studying as a student or, or teaching. And I finally came to the realization that I clearly love colleges and universities and even as I'm doing work in finance and administration I'm drawn to college campuses and was very, very fortunate uh, to uh, apply for and get the job as the the budget director at Dartmouth, flew through 2,000 miles east, and uh, began uh, began my career in higher ed, and I've really enjoyed every minute of it. That's that's cool. That is really interesting. So, is there any achievement, whether in your scholastic or corporate journey, that you're most proud of? Sure. I mean, the, you know, the hardest was doing the the, the PhD in a very non-traditional way. So I, I began that work uh, at uh, at Dartmouth. And it was a, a lifelong dream of mine. Uh, and, and back in the 1990s, I almost decided to go back and do a, do a PhD and pursue a career in academia. And for various reasons, didn't, didn't choose to do so at the time. Uh, but it was always something that I wanted to, uh, to accomplish. And um, so, you know, it took me a long time. Yeah, yeah. So I was lucky that the University of New Hampshire, which is about an hour and a half away from, from Dartmouth, uh, I only had five courses to go because of the master's work. So uh, again, the, the folks at Dartmouth, who I'm forever grateful to, allowed me the space to get over to campus to take these courses uh, in person. Um, and then once I got through with those classes, 
it was you know getting through the oral exams and then into the dissertation. So it wasn't a lot of class time, and I probably wouldn't have been able to pull it off otherwise. Um, but the, uh, the dissertation itself was quite an undertaking, and my life was getting busier and more complicated. I moved to Amherst to take a bigger role. Kids were getting a little bit older, uh, more activities and so forth. And so I went long stretches of time where I made very little progress. Uh, and I, I, my dissertation was on the, the study of Denver, Colorado. And I made a point in my office to have a big, beautiful picture of the city uh, right where I looked uh, anytime I had a meeting in there because it reminded me that I had work to do and that I had to keep making progress. And it uh, finally, eventually, was able to carve out enough time and, and took a leave period and so forth and was able to, to get it done. And I finished in 2017. Wow, you had quite the workload. So, seeing your extensive work in the private sector, what advice could you provide to those business students looking to maybe mimic a career such as your own? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't recommend anybody mimic uh, my career. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't wish that on anyone, but um, but no, my you know my career has taken so many twists and turns, and I think the most important advice I can give it's advice that I hope all of our students have heard from from others, and that is, don't think you know what you want to do and be for the rest of your life. There will be so many twists and turns, and learn what you uh, what what energizes you and makes you excited about being here at Marist, and then be open to a career that's probably going to have six or seven forks in the road where you're going to go places you never imagined. I never imagined when I graduated college in 1993 that I would be a, a college president. Um, uh, but I sort of let followed my passion and let my career take me where it did. And I was open to you know, physical moves from one side of the country to another, moving from one industry to another. And the only reason I feel I was able to, uh, to do that was uh, learning from a lot of different disciplines and not being so focused on one particular element of the curriculum, um, uh, but, but challenging myself to learn, you know, in fields that I knew nothing about. Uh, and, and that will benefit uh, our students in so many ways and, 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 you know, taking some risks and taking some classes that you may not feel prepared for uh, will we'll, we'll challenge you in ways that will benefit you for the rest of your career. But be open to those forks in the road because life can get really interesting and really enjoyable if you allow it to take, uh, take you where it will. Yeah. So, are there any moments or events that you feel truly defined your career? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know that I'd say defined, but um, my, my last year at, at Amherst was certainly the most challenging and the one where I learned the most from. And this is because I was responsible for, for, uh, for finance and administration. Much of our COVID response fell to, to, to me uh, to, to operationalize what Biddy Martin, the president, and the rest of the senior team decided was, was, uh, was, was best for the, for the college. And so I had to draw upon a lot of different elements of my career all at the same time, trying to keep students safe, trying to keep them uh, moving through their, their, their classes, uh, all during the middle of a pandemic, which created significant health risks, not only to students, but to uh, faculty and staff as well. So there were moments where we didn't know if we were going to be able to open in the fall of what would have been uh, 2020. Uh, and we spent all summer you know, working very long hours imagining different ways that we can operate a college and do so safely. And it really challenged me in ways that I grew from and ultimately uh, was very gratified by uh, because we all came together uh, and, and helped navigate through it. And so the work that has been done here at Marist, I know students uh, at times, you know, feel some of the decisions are more restrictive, but, you know, I can, I can promise you that, uh, that at Amherst and at Marist, um, people involved in making those decisions have a very hard time uh, balancing safety with running the kind of college that I know our students really want to experience. So. Uh, hopefully, we're getting uh, toward the back end of this pandemic. Knock on wood, there's no wood nearby. I would knock on it if I could. Who knows You know if there's another variant looming out there and so forth, but it is our hope that we are quickly on the way back towards uh, providing students with the full and complete experience that we know that they really want. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that must have been a lot to experience and handle at the time. I, I don't think I could have been like a leader in a college trying to do that kind of thing. I'm not going to lie. I, it's just so. With 14 years in higher education, you certainly have created a background in scholastic work. What skills are most important to you as the new leader of Marist College? Yeah, it's um, uh, you know it's hard to reduce <laughs> uh, you know, your, your questions down to, down down to one. Um, you know, it's it's listening and communicating, yeah. right? So so. Um, you know, there are so many different important voices in a college community, be it the students, uh, alumni, staff, um, uh, faculty. Um, it's 
everybody has a different view of what Marist is and should be. Um, and so, first of all, it's incumbent upon me to do all the listening I can, and it's really how I'm trying to spend most of the first uh, amount of time here in my first few months, uh, and, and really upwards of a year or more, is listening and learning from as many different people that I can that I can hear from, and then synthesi- synthesizing that into a a, a vision um, for the for the future, and engaging the rest of the community and contributing towards that vision and ultimately um, energizing and standing behind the vision and helping make it a reality. So, you, you know, you, you can't communicate effectively unless you've listened well. Um, and uh, you can't communicate effectively if it's not your first priority. So um, that's really how I'll spend, you know, the, the early part of this time here. And I, and I hope it will, um, it will yield uh, terrific results as we get into strategic planning for the future and engaging all elements of this community in, in planning for that. So you, you touched on my next question a little bit. I was going to say, what do you feel is key in communicating with the mayor's community and the public? And seeing how for these past three weeks you've been starting to open up office hours, et cetera, how has everything been going? How's the learning curve? Well, the learning curve is steep, right? Yeah. So I, uh, you know, I've met some people who have been here for 50 years. Yeah. Um, and I've met some students who, uh, you know, had many uh, uh, folks from their family come here as well. And so I'm the new person here. I've met some people that I've actually started since I've started, yeah. which excites me. Uh, I get to welcome them to, to Marist um, here as uh, I'm not, I'm not the, uh, the, the, the newest person here. So, um, but it's, uh, you know, again, it's you know, not to be repetitive, but it really is you know, engaging and listening. The, the office hours have been great. Yeah. I've only had a few of them so far, but the range of issues and things that students want to talk about is incredibly broad. Uh, some students want to talk about things that aren't going well. Some students want to share all the exciting things they're doing with me. Some just want to say hello, and that's all good. Yeah. Uh, it's been wonderful so far, and I look forward to engaging with students, not just in office hours, yeah. but uh, walking across campus, you know, as students uh, say hello, it's a great chance for me to stop and ask them where they're from, how they're Maris experience is going. Is there anything that we can be doing better? Uh, you know, I love going to our athletic contests and our plays and our lectures and so forth. Another chance for me to engage informally with other students and other members of the community who are there. So, um, again, it's really uh, it's really helpful for me to hear what's on students' uh, minds, and I really hope they'll take advantage of uh, when they see me of telling me. I mean, I'm sure you've bumped into a lot of people already. We just had alumni weekend. There's there's a family weekend. There's so much going on, and I mean. It's exciting. It's exciting to see everyone out. I mean, I've, oh, as a sophomore, I'm still like bumping into people I've never met. So, with President Murray acting in this role for the past 40 years, has he passed along any tidbits of information or advice that you can give to us? Like, you know, nothing that's like unclassified. <laughs> uh, well, you know, Dennis's love for, for Marist and, and all the different ways that he has contributed to Marist being what it is today are, are so obvious in so many different ways. And so he's been very gracious with uh, his time, his attention, and his insights, and, uh, and his offer to uh, continue to connect with me as I'm finding my own way as our new, uh, as our new president and drawing upon the many things that he uh, is aware of and that, he, and that he has built here. So, you know, any specific words of advice, you know, I'll, I'll keep between me, uh, you know, he, he and I, uh, but, uh, but just suffice to say, he's been incredibly gracious and, and a, an incredible source of knowledge for me and yet another, you know, very, very important voice for me to listen and, and learn from. Um, and, uh, you know, he's still still present on campus, uh, an office in the library, and you'll still see him around, uh, which, is, which is great. I look forward to uh, um, bringing Maris forward from the very solid foundation that he's put in place. So you've been here for three weeks, right? So have you found a favorite restaurant on campus? I know I bumped into you once uh, when we were in line. Have you found like your favorite go-to spot yet, even off campus? Well, you know, I'm supposed to say all of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I love going to the dining hall and uh, you know, and even chatting with students about what they think about the the food options and uh, connected with Nadia uh, se- several times uh, already about uh, changes that, uh, that you know that we've we've put in place. I, I do have to say I have a soft spot for Rossi's yes. on the north side of campus, but I can't say for sure that's my favorite one because then I'll be slighting all the others. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, it's great from the cafe over in McCann to the core dining hall to Rossi's. I mean, there's, there's a, lot of, um, a lot of dining outlets, way more than, the, you know, at Amherst, there's one primary dining outlet and, and, a, and a cafe or two here and there. So I still have some more exploring to do, but I, I do have a soft spot already for Rossi's. It's nice. It's fine Italian cooking. So is there any way the student body can assist you during this transition now that we're going on to the future? 
Yeah, it's everything they've already been doing, which is which is being uh, very open and welcoming and stopping me and having conversations about you know the good, the bad, and and, and other ways that I can that I can serve them. So I, I hope they continue to see me as uh, as approachable as they have already, which is really great, and uh, and and aren't afraid of telling me what's on their mind. I, I will ask if if uh, students have ideas or, or or have things that they. Uh, think that Maris can do better, please bring forward an idea with the criticism, right? So it's very easy to uh, criticize or point something out that's not going well, that's wonderful, we need to hear that, but much more powerful if it comes with a suggestion or an idea and that we can partner together then uh, to make whatever it is that they feel that Maris can and should be doing better, we can be partners in making it better. Awesome. So what are you most excited to experience now as the new president of Maris College moving forward? Yeah, I mean, you know, these first few weeks have been have been have been great as I've been taking in uh, uh, all the events and meeting all, all everyone that I can. I mean, we're 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 also hard at work on on a number of things here here as well, uh, and I'm really excited. Um, you know, ultimately to transition from a listening and learning and absorbing phase to a full speed ahead. Let's start getting to work together. Um, and you know, there are a number of things that um, you know. Five, ten years from now, I want to look back from where we are and say that we've made this amazing place even more amazing. And so I'm, I'm very excited, uh, you know, for that gradual transition from, um, you know, absorbing to executing. So lastly, <clears throat> seeing as you did grow up in New Jersey and a substantial amount of our student population is from the state, I'd like to ask you the age-old question, pork roll or Taylor ham? I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, uh, this is not even a question. T Taylor Ham. Uh, so, yeah, you know, one of those age-old North Jersey, South Jersey uh, debates. You know, New Jersey's a single state. It's a small state, but it really is two states in one, uh, as anybody from New Jersey knows. So uh, those of us from North Jersey tend to not even recognize our, our counterparts from South Jersey. You know, they do some really weird things down there, like cheer for Philadelphia sports teams and things that we just can't wrap our head around uh, up in North Jersey. So, yeah, I mean, you know, New Jersey people give it to each other pretty well. And, you know, this is one that the North Jersey folks are right about. But I'm sure I'm sure the South Jersey folks will will, will think differently. So at the risk of offending anyone from New Jersey, I will say whatever you think it is, it is. But from my standpoint, Taylor Ham. Well, I didn't hear anything about Central Jersey, so I've, I've got, I'm from Albany, so I have no place to say anything, but I, I'll keep my one out of this. But President Wyman, once again, thank you so much for being on the show today and taking your time out of your busy schedule, because I know it's getting crazy, and I really appreciate it. It was my pleasure to have you on the Red Fox Report, and I can speak for the entire student body when I say that we are very excited to have you as president. And thank you. We always wait for your continued success. Great. Thanks, Nick. Uh, it's my pleasure. This was a lot of fun. That concludes our first episode of the semester and our first interview with President Wyman. If you see President Wyman walking through Dyson or working diligently in Greystone, take the time and welcome him to the Marist community. The Red Fox Report returns, and I'll count on seeing you there.